Hi guys, this is Re Raptor with step 13 of how to assemble the Devo Black Widow. In this video, we will make the first tests and adjustments. So, turn the power on and look closely to the display. The very first thing you need to check is the splash screen that appears the second you turn the printer on. If the splash screen shows the BL touch letters, then the firmware you have has the auto level function enabled. If not, then the auto level is disabled. This must match your setup, otherwise you will have problems when you home the Z axis. You can check the community guide for more details. And the first test we need to do is the movement test. So, get all three axes away from the edge by hand first. Then, select the axis you want to move and move them a little bit. This will tell you a couple of things. The first thing is if the motors and axes are moving fine. The second thing is if the direction is correct. Remember, a positive movement should move the X to the right side, the Y to the front and the Z up. If they move in the wrong direction, it means you might have the bell brackets installed wrong and when you home the printer, the axis will go the wrong way and crash into the limits. If everything moves the right way, proceed to the next step. I always like to test the end stops before I actually execute the automatic home sequence. In this test, I will check if they are working correctly before installing them in their home positions and this way prevent a crash in case one of them is not working correctly. Even if they do turn the light on and off correctly, the return signal can still not go to the main board and you will have the crash. So, let's take the end stops out one at a time. I know for a fact that the machine will start homing the X axis first, then the Y axis and finally the Z axis. So, let's start with the X one. Get a 4mm Allen key or any other tool that can fit the reset button hole. With all the axes in the middle, select Auto Home. When the axis starts to move, be quick and trigger the sensor with a double tap. And then press the reset button before the next axis starts to move and reaches its limits. If the axis stop moving when you have triggered the sensor, it means the sensor is working fine. Before testing the next sensor, go ahead and install this one and this time at the correct home position. Leave the printer on and select Disable Stepper Motors in case the motors are engaged. Move the axis by hand and check where the sensor must be placed by checking the sensor light. Make sure you leave a distance between the sensing position and the mechanical limit. Remember that the sensor distance is very small you need to check that the sensor is sensing the axis and without touching it. Now, go ahead and test the Y axis. This time, you will trigger the Y sensor only when the Y axis starts to move, which is after the X axis finishes the auto home sequence. Hit the reset button once again afterwards and install the Y sensor if it's OK. Last but not least, do the same with the Z-axis. If you have the VLT sensor enabled, you don't need to check the Z end stop.
before installing the Z end stop, adjust the heat bed just a little by loading the springs and leave a margin for the leveling adjustment later on. One advice I can give you is to get a glass. You don't need to get a fancy one, uh, just a 3 or 4 mm tempered glass or even a normal glass will work just fine. I bought this one only for 4 bucks. The glass has many advantages, such as First, it keeps your heat bed surface brand new. You will scrape the glass instead of scratching this beautiful bed. Second, take the glass out when removing the print. That will take the stress out of the bed and wheels. It will maintain the manual leveling adjustments for a long time and your wheels will last longer. And third, even if the bed is warped, the glass will always stay flat, which is a plus when not using a level sensor. So now, put the glass back on and manually lower the Z until the nozzle is very close to the bed. When adjusting the Z end stop, you need to take the glass thickness into account. Get your uh, Z end stop in position. Take the glass out and home the printer. It's also very important to know your printer travel limits. These limits are defined in the firmware and normally are bigger than what you can actually move. So let's check this. Start by selecting the x-axis and move that axis to zero. This starting point is defined by the end stop. You can align the zero with the edge of the bed if it's mechanically possible. Now we need to know how far it can go. Move slowly and see how far the axis can move without hitting the limit. The value that you get is what you will define as your X bed size in the slicer. Repeat the same for the Y axis and the Z axis. Now it's time to level the bed. Put the glass back on and secure it. I normally use a couple of paper clamps, one at the front and the other at the back. Heat up the bed at around 50 degrees C. Start by homing the printer and then disable the stepper motors. 
Now move the nozzle to the first corner. To level the bed, you can use a gap meter or a piece of paper with thickness of around 0.07 mm. I prefer the paper because it's much easier to work with. Adjust the screws until you feel the nozzle touching the paper. Please note that you will be doing this with a bad hot, so be careful. Move to the next corner and repeat the process. When you finish the last corner, go back to the first one and recheck. Sometimes you will need to go over the four corners a few times until it's stable. And this concludes today's video. Thanks for watching and don't miss the next and final step.